Continuing our discussion of exponents, uh, let's think about what we have so far. We have defined base 2 any integer exponent. And we already know that when we work with numbers, we have integers, we have rational numbers. So one question is, how about exponent of a rational number? Does that make sense? Well, unless we play with it, we're not going to know. So let's start playing with it. So we're going to worry about rational exponents. So recall that if I wrote 2 to the fifth, that means 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times, right? So rational number, can you think of a rational number? Well, 5 is a rational number. But what if I said, can you make sense of 32 to the power 1 fifth? Remember what fractions mean to you. 1 fifth, that means 1 part out of 5. So use your knowledge of fractions. And be a mathematician right now. You know, in mathematics, doing research is doing what we're doing right now. You play with it. You say, OK, I know what 2 to the fifth means. Do you think I can make sense of 32 to the 1 fifth? And you say, OK, 32 to the 1 fifth is, and then come up with your answer. And if it is consistent with all the other things we've done, then we're good to go. So that's how mathematicians do research. At a higher level, this is exactly what you're doing right now. So no matter what your answer is, do spend time and give us an answer. All right. Let's see what we can do here. We know that 32 is 2 to the fifth. And so 2 to the fifth to the exponent of 1 fifth. We already know that if you had 2 to the fifth to the second, we multiplied these. So if you do that now, what do you think will happen? We'll end up with 2. And that would make sense because 32 to the power 1 fifth, 2 to the fifth, when you take a power of 5, you take this many, you take 5 twos. You take this many twos. So now we want to know I want a fifth many of 32s. But 32 has is made up of 5 twos. So a fifth, there are 5 twos here, right? A fifth of them would be just 1 2. All right, so that was our motivation for how to work with fractional powers. But the real motivation comes from uh, something geometric. So remember how we talked about area of a square is length times width. A times A would give me A squared, right? So area is A squared units, and the length is A. When the length is A and you have a cube, then the volume is A times A times A or A cubed. Here's an example of exponents being used practically, right? So now, what if you want the opposite? What if you know the area, and you know the volume, and you want to know what the length of the square or the cube is? So a to the power 1 half units, when a is a positive real number, can be looked at as length of the side of a square of a square units area. v to the power 1 third where v is a positive real number can be looked at looked upon as what length of a side of a cube whose volume is v cubic units so there's your motivation for how we can make sense of um, fractional powers all right so let's take an example if the area of a square is 9 what do you think is the length of each side well here's my square well, to get the length, first I need to know what that 9 is made up of. If it's a square, then I'm going to have to make a square grid. And I get uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is my 9 squared centimeter. Each square here is a square centimeter. And there are 9 of them, 3 times 3. So the length of the side would be what? 3 centimeters. All right, let's do another example. Let's say I have a cube. That's 8 cubic centimeters. What do you think we should do? Well, we're going to have to fill that with 1 cubic centimeters and see how many fit. So we have 4 on the bottom and 4 on the top. That's 8 cubic centimeters. So what do you think is the side? Then that's 1, that's 2. That's 2 centimeters. All right. So we are defining that for any counting number n and a real number a, and we are looking at non-negative real numbers. Then a to the power 1 over n 
is a real number that, when multiplied by itself n times, results in the number a. You might be like, huh? <laughs> what? So if you feel like that, it's important to just look at an example. And we'll do that in a little bit. So for example, 32 to the power 1 fifth. We're saying 32 to the power 1 fifth is that number so that when you take that number and multiply it by itself five times, you get 32. And we already saw that that number was 2, because 2 times 2 times uh, 2 five times gives you 32. So 32 to the power 1 fifth is defined as 2. So a is 32. So now note, if you have a to the power numerator, denominator, numerator is m, denominator is n, then that is saying that it's a to the power 1 over n multiplied by itself m times. So it would look like this. Okay. You can also think of it as a to power m raised to power 1 over n. Either one of them interpretations are fine. All right, let's take a look at an example then. So a to the power 7 thirds, what's that? That's the same as saying a to the power 2 and 1 third. So if you have an improper fraction, you can write that as a mixed fraction. You already know what a square means. So you have a squared times a to the 1 third. So we can always write rational exponents in such a way that the numerator is always smaller than the denominator. And you have to use uh, mixed fractions for that. All right, let's do that. So we already saw 32 is 2 to the fifth. So 2 to the 5 fourths is 2 and 1 and 1 fourth. This is going to help you later immensely. So make sure you know how to change uh, base to an exponent that is improper fraction into a mixed fraction and rewrite it. Rewrite it so that you have um, base to a whole power and base to a proper fraction exponent. And then, of course, if you have a number, then 2 squared, we already know, is 4. So I can rewrite that as 4 times 2 to the half power. And when you have a number, 2 squared, then you can evaluate it as 2 squared is 2 times 2, or 4. So you can rewrite it like this. So you have the whole part here, and then you have a base to a fractional exponent, which is a proper fraction. Do this homework. Continuing our discussion of exponents, we are going to introduce to you a new symbol representing fractional powers. And that's called radicals. So an nth root or a radical, which is written with a little n and a little square root symbol like this, with the n goes in here, and a like that, is defined in terms of fractional exponents as uh, nth root of a is a to the power of 1 over n. So look, this denominator of n in the exponent is this number n here. So nth root is defined as a to the power of 1 over n. So that means that nth root of a is a number that, when raised to the nth power, gives you the answer of a. That's what the nth root represents. One note we would like to make is that if this n is 2, then we leave the 2 out. But if it's 3, 4, 5, any other counting number, then we put it there. So when you have square root, the, n, the 2 is left out. So for example, if I wanted square root 25, you're looking for something squared giving you 25, and that would be 5. Cube root 64 is going to be 4 because 4 cubed is 64. So it would pay you uh, great dividends if you remember some basic squares and cubes, like 1 squared is 1, 1 cubed is 1. 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8. 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27. 4 squared is 16, 4 cubed is 64, and so on. Negative 8. We know that negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So you end up with negative 2. So cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So that's how you read it. Square root of 25, 
cube root of 64, cube root of negative 8. Make sure you know how to read it. Now, square root of negative 4 is what? Well, negative 4. Anytime you have a negative inside a square root, it's going to turn into an i. Why? Because we already defined in complex numbers that square root of negative 1 is i for imaginary. And so square root 4 is 2. So square root negative 4 is defined as 2i. And why? Because when you square it, 2 squared is 4, and i squared is negative 1, because i is defined as square root of negative 1. All right, so in the notation nth root of a, a is called the radicand, a is called the index. So this a that sits on the inside of that symbol is called radicand. This is called the index. Again, just like we made sure you understood base and exponents, you want to make sure you can identify radicands and index. So that symbol is called a radical. When the index is 2, we call it square root and leave the 2 out and use just the radical notation. When the index is n, we say nth root. So that would be cube root here. Can you see? So that would be cube root. This would be fifth root, and so on. All right, so go ahead and uh, give us the radicand index and how to read it, how you would read it out loud. Write it in words here, please. So. 25 is the radicand. When there is no number here, that means index is 2. And you would read that as square root of 25. So go ahead and do that for all of them. Pause the video here, do the problems, and then check. See if you got them all. If you got them all correct, then that's great. Now, if you notice, we threw in 1 over 5th root of 7, and this negative doesn't have anything to do with the exponent. Remember, nope, the negative is going to follow through if you were to evaluate it. 7 is the radicand, 5 is the root. So you have negative 1 over 5th root of 7. That's how you would read this. 4th root of 3 minus 4a. 7th root of x cubed. So that's how you read all these. All right, so this is your homework.